<laughs> hey, sweetie. Good to see you again. You come over here. Yes, yes. You are the rock star today. Hello. And every day. Why is my, my mic so low? I can't do my sexy talk. <laughs> turn, turn my mic up a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. And the monitors as well. I like to hear me <laughs> talk as well. Give, you, <laughs> give me some monitors here. Check, check, one, two. Hello. <laughs> You gotta turn your ringer off. You just fed the camera flash at the camera. Whoop. Check, check, Let me one, make two. Make sure mine is off too, low key. <laughs> oh no. Turn your okay. ringers off. I don't wanna hear nothing accidentally playing but my album. Ooh, we love it. And on that note, let's talk about the new album, let's Elevation. Talk about it. Who has it, first of all? Who has it? One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Wow. We good, we good. Elevation, first of all, the title yes. is obvious. We all know what elevation means, but is that what you intended it to mean when you came up with the thought of this new album, Elevation? Yeah. I intended it to mean that we are still ascending, mm -hmm. that we have not um, given up on trying to be better. Okay. We have not given up on trying to do more. Um, you know, every day is a process of trying to figure out um, What's the next piece? What's the next next cool idea? What's the next, um, what's the evolution? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so Elevation was good because coming off of when we, all right, hallelujah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make you think about Platinum. some things. Uh, Platinum. Coming off of when we, it was such a big moment that, you know, you can lose yourself in big moments like that and forget to get back to what got you those big moments. And so elevation was the, the promise of continuing that process. So mm -hmm. we're still fighting to get better. We're still trying to, you know, make better songs, better videos, sing better, perform better, all of the above. And hopefully elevation, um, it, it shows you that. Hopefully it does. And Tank, when you write an album, I'm going to brag on him again. Listen to all these people he's written for. And this is just a partial list. Beyonce, like really? Uh, the late, great Aaliyah, Fantasia, of course, uh, Omarion. Who is unbothered, by the way. <laughs> uh, Jamie Foxx, Monica, Chris Brown, Chicago's Dave Hollister, Chicago's Donnell Jones. I mean, I know there are a ton more. It's a ton. You are very talented, Thank not you. only as a singer, songwriter, and producer. You are just multi-talented. I went to a concert once. Actually, it was an event I was having, and you were the featured artist. And I was like, why is he singing Omarion songs? Why is he singing Aaliyah songs? They were like, B, those are his songs. I was like, oops, I stand corrected. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I lots stole that of idea talent, from man. Babyface. That's good stuff, though. Yeah, Babyface you sings wrote them. all you of the songs them. he wrote. And, um, yeah. and, and he had me come out one day and sing with him on some of those ah, songs, like the dope. Boys to Men songs and stuff. It was just the coolest moment. I was like, I'm gonna steal that. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. dope. What is your thought process, Tank, when you write an album? Do you just write based on life experiences? Do you write on trends that are happening in the world? W what's in your mind when you write, when you sit down to write an album? When I write an album, I wanna be as honest about where I am in my life as possible because I feel like that's the thing that has, number one, separated me, but that, that has also given me the longevity that I've had is that you know, people kind of, um, they gravitate to my personal experiences because a lot of which they can relate to. You know, it's not nothing fictional, like the sentiments are real. You know what I mean? Like you can listen to every album and know exactly what was going on in my life at the time. You know what I'm saying, good or bad. Like, you can hear it you know, on Sex, Love, and Pain. You heard a song called I Hate You. I hated her. I did. And then you can come all the way to Elevation and hear our song where I actually married her. Yes. So, like, you know, my life is in my music. You know what I mean? And sometimes people will send me songs that are dope, that'll have a little trend attached to it. And I'm like, ooh, that's fire, you know, now. And I'll rock out with, you know, some, some of the new things that are going on. But for the most part, it's... It's an autobiography. Uh, so let's talk about the album specifically. You got a couple artists on there. Mm -hmm. JoJo. Ooh. Hallelujah. The crazy, right? Crazy. Keep crazy. Sweat? Even crazier. 
the legend. Yeah. You know, what what we all as solo R and B artists, black R and B artists aspire to be. Mm-hmm. Owners. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, investors. Yep. Um, all Keith Sweat is all of that, and people don't even realize it. Yeah, he's an OG. He's a real OG. Yes, he is. Uh, you got an interlude on there with Omari from uh, Power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My brother. He's a, your brother. <laughs> <laughs> we don't look that much alike. We just, we're just similar. Yeah, we actually kind of do. Kind of. Listen, <laughs> I, was, I was at, uh, we were at Essence Festival. This is the story. He don't, I don't even know if he want me to tell the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. We were at Essence, and he walked in. This was years, many moons ago. And he walked in, and I, and and you know, we both kind of kind of hunched over just a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying our backs a little wide at the top. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this. I was like, we had this thing called the the silver back gorilla game, <laughs> right? That's what we, you know, that's what all me and my guys were. And I was like, I was like, oh, you part of the silver back gorilla game? He said, I ain't no gorilla. <laughs> I said, yes, you are. Look at you. You're aggressive. <laughs> Look at your back. Yeah. You're mean. He's mm-hmm. like, I am a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> you convinced him that quickly. I convinced quickly. him that quick. So Hilarious. We, so we just, you know, we just have similar mannerisms and, you know, kind of built to like, I don't know. They should have let me stunt double for Ghost, though. Yeah, easy. Right, Could've ladies? Easy. Yeah. Easy. Uh, anyway, uh, so any collabos that you have on the album? You're on there with uh, Car- Carvina? Carvina from yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's Jesus. Um, like my thing with my with my collaborations were I just wanted people who who fit the texture of you know of the piece that I was making. You know what I mean? It wasn't about like who's the hot artist right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That I can put on this record, and that's cool. You know, that that that's a real life to live. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to um, play the numbers game, you know, play the billboard game. But for me, like, I like to play the body of work game. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I want to create something um, so solid and so memorable that I go and get the people that make sense, whether they have a, whether they have a song on the charts or, yeah. or, you know, or they're working their day job at, at Burger King. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Like, if you're talented, if you got it, and I hear it, and I, and I, and I think it fits what I'm doing, I'm rocking with you. You know what I mean? So that's like there's a guy on my album I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like he was he, he was on Instagram playing guitar. He played a mashup of of my of my song, I think it was When We and You by um Jacquees, who's who's the king of R and B. Um well, we'll get to uh, that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, the album is out, so um and he was playing it and it was so crazy. It was like I'd never heard his gu- a, a guitar sound like it was so crazy. I said, I just DM'd him. I said, bro, I need something like that. Don't plagiarize nobody's stuff, but send it to me. I need just that, mm-hmm. that some snaps maybe, but just guitar. And he sent it to me, and it became this featuring Sean Stockman and Omari Harvey. And wow. that was that's his first placement ever. Yeah, He's never had Instagram. a pr- off of Instagram. But never that's you know that's what I'm into. You know what I mean? I'm into like searching out and finding like, like who got it? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Who's 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 got the new thing that because you got to realize whether it be sports, entertainment, whatever, the best of us aren't always seen. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's <clears throat> there's always a guy in the hood who was like, oh yeah, you think Derrick Rose nice? Uh, uh Will, yep. Willie Jones over here used to <laughs> used to give him eighty points a game. You know what I'm saying? He just he just couldn't <laughs> stop drinking that liquor and put that crack rock down. But he used to like we always there's always a story always. about you know those urban legends, those people who didn't get the shot. So um, I know I'm a hard worker. I know I'm competitive. I know I'm really really good at what I do. Mm-hmm. But I also know I'm not the only one. You know. But you know, on the flip side of that, it's a good look what you're doing because someone who may not have been known, the fact that they are on an established platinum award winning person's album, mm-hmm. you're giving them a shot. You know what I mean? So on the flip side, uh, that's a good look. I just don't look at it like that. Why not? Because I I just I don't really I don't really work in the space of big eyes and little U's. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like everybody I come in contact with, um, we we meet at eye level. The, my respect level for them is here. Uh, it's across the board. 
You know what I mean? That's how I've been, you know, my whole life, my whole career from shoot from the from the janitor all the way to the person who owns the building. They get my same respect, same eye contact, same everything. So I don't like when with the kid with the with the record, like I didn't see it as me giving him a shot. So let me try to take advantage of him and hit him with the lower price or get him. Like I saw it as a, as an opportunity for me to add something really special to my project. Right. But what I'm saying is it's a good look because he probably would not have otherwise had that opportunity and yeah. you gave it to him. So that's a good look in that regard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think good. it's a positive thing. It's a positive thing, okay. Tank. Yes, ma'am. It's all good. What's the theme Where of you elevation? Where you coming from? Where you been? Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know. sweating and everything. He's like, oh, I finally made it into this thing. Okay. Well, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Thank you. What's uh, you know, we're we're we know you as being a sex symbol, R&B artist. Um, at concerts, you take your shirt off and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. um, what was I about to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What's the theme of elevation? Is it about that sensuality? Is it a course of different aspects of your life? Is it a combination of things? What's the theme? Elevation is full circle. You know, elevation goes from, you know, uh, Omari um, doing a spoken word piece about my life encompassing my career um, to elevation, the song, to me kind of kind of poking my chest out about the things that I, I do, the things that I can do, um, you know, to back to champion, to me celebrating um, every great woman, you know, who's, who's helped make a great man, you know what I mean? Um, um, to dirty, you know what that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> all the way to you mean more, uh, you mean more to me than you know, um, to our song. So it's, elevation is full circle. I wanted to do, I wanted to do everything that I do in one album, you know what I mean, and, and, and push the line on it. You achieved it. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. It's good stuff. I like it. I've always been a fan. You know that. So you've been in this game for almost 20 years, or about 20 years or so? I've been in for 22. OK. Um, Tank as a solo artist, 19. OK. Yeah. Uh, I first got in radio like in 01. Okay, yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. we used to play Maybe I Deserve Ooh. to Death. Thank you, thank Ooh, you. I was doing the late night show on WGCI <laughs> at the time, Whispers <laughs> in the Dark, honey. Yes. I played Maybe I Deserve <laughs> every hour. Thank you, I would have been I was broke. Like, who is this not tank? Do that. Who is this tank? And years later, I'm on V103 playing When We yeah. every five minutes. That's crazy. So, yeah, you're, you're solid, man. You are super solid. What is the typical day? And you will be able to ask Tank some questions today, too. What is the typical day in the life of Tank? Like, when you wake up, you obviously hit the gym. We know that. But what, what do you do every day? Like, as a celebrity, as a songwriter, entertainer, what, what is your day like? I am so simple. Really? Yeah, I'm the most basic. So let's do, let's do it. I wake up. Okay. Um, if I'm on drop off duty that day, then I'm doing drop offs. You okay. know what I'm saying? Dropping mm. off the kids. the kids. Sometimes my wife will wake up and say, "I ain't doing this today." And I'm like, All right, <laughs> I got it. Um, and then I come back. I run about three miles, and then I eat, and then I go to the gym and lift my second second gym thing, whatever. Wow. And then I come back and. If there's music to be done, you know what I'm saying? I'll hit the studio, get a little music done. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm on kid pickup, then <laughs> I go pick up the kids mm -hmm. and then come home, play a little bit with the kids, have fun, uh, give Zion a bath, <laughs> um, hang out, put them to bed, hang out with the wife, get some Cheez-Its and <laughs> Cheez a Pacifico beer oh. and uh, catch up on whatever shows we missed. And that's it. When you have tank quiet time, what does that consist of? Are you one of those <coughs> artists who, I know you're full of music because that's what you do, but are you one of those artists who carries around like a recorder? And if you hear something, you'll hit the voice recorder on your phone or whatever yeah. to capture that music. You are. Yeah, it's on my phone. Like I use my phone <laughs> all the time. So 
you can go through my voice notes and all you hear is and don't nobody want it. So you actually use those for like later albums? I use it, and I'll go back and listen to it, and I'll be like, oh, that was trash. And then I'll keep going, and like, oh, that's good, and find some ideas that way. Or like most of the times I'm in my house, and I'll just run to my piano and just, oh, and then, you know, figure it out there, you know what I'm saying? And if it's something cool, I'll post it on Instagram or something. But so you're on your ninth studio album? Ninth solo album, tenth okay. album, if you include TGT, yeah. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's within how many years? Nine years. Nine? And it's crazy because I was I was on the bench for five. Yeah. And I take that back, not nine years, 19 years. I was on the bench for five, so. Okay. You know what I mean? That was that that hurt. Yeah. Being on that bench. Right. And even celebrities and well known people like yourself sometimes have to sit on the bench. Yeah, I mean when you, you know, try to, you know, do bodily harm to the people who run your record label. You gotta, okay. gotta sit on the bench. Okay. Stop playing with my money. Okay. Anyway. So during that time though, I know you've always had a goal and a dream and then Boom, here you are years later, so successful, platinum record, album, on tour. Talk about that journey. Like, I know you had some dark moments. We all do. Yeah. I know you went through situations where you're like, man, is this what I want to continue to do? Yeah. Or you tell us. No, I had a, I mean, I had a really bad breaking point. And it was, you know, it was during that time. I mean, what kind of kicked it off was that I had about $200, you know, to my name. And my record company owed me six hundred thousand dollars, and they literally didn't want just didn't want to give it to me. Like we, we'll f we're not gonna call you back. Mm. We're not gonna call your lawyer back. We get it whenever we get it to you. Wow. And you know that sent me to a very dark place, mm -hmm. um, which which it would send any father, husband, yep. <coughs> you know. Send you to send anybody there, um, and so that you know me me kind of being impulsive and um, reverting back to my you know old ways kind of got me you know in more trouble um, than I had bargained for. So sitting during that time, um, you know, for me it was really nothing left left to do. It was either go to prison or go back home, and I was like, I'll go home. You know what I'm saying? I'll go back and play at the church. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they'll be happy to see me down at Antioch Baptist. <laughs> 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 and um, and I was like, you know, sitting, I'm standing in Jamie Foxx's kitchen. And I'm like, man, I'm going home. I'm out. I quit. Mm. And he was like, you can't quit. Him and his sister. I was like, I was like, well, man, this thing, this is trash. I sing better than him. He got number one record. I sing better than him. He touring. I sing better than him. I don't know what she doing here. You know, like. <clears throat> I was like, I like all they, they they won't spend no money on me. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I was in, I was in those feelings, mm -hmm. and he was like, he was like, number one, life ain't fair, but number two, you can't, if you leave, if you stop doing it, then who's gonna inspire me? Mm, deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's going who do I look to if you're not here? And I was like, I don't know. And he said, he said, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna let, you're gonna stay at my house. And you're gonna use my studio, whatever you need, until you figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And and it's funny because he has a little joke he tells. Like I have I have a catalog of music in Jamie's computers that nobody's ever heard. Oh really? And so <laughs> Jamie Jamie says that every now and then he'll put on a robe and like take a take a bottle of wine, glass of wine, <laughs> and he'll sit in the studio and just play Tank <laughs> Records. <laughs> And sip his wine <laughs> with his I robe love on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> or he'll tell, he'll bring girls over and say, "Yeah, this is all me. I'm this me singing right now." And that's <laughs> that's how I feel about you. Um, but you know, uh, crawling out of that dark space, um, it was just it was out of a need, man. I, you know, I still had kids. Um, I had went through a divorce, which was the worst year of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I know I was homeless pretty much. I don't have nowhere to live. I was living with people and and out of a need to eat, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just start writing and producing, mm. you know what I'm saying, and trying to sell this music and see what happens. And the rest is, you know, over two hundred songs mm. written, produced and released, you know what I mean? And, you know, records and 
and excuse me, and I think the 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 big one that really got me back was writing on the first dream, the unpredictable, yeah. uh, being a part of that one. Yes. Um, and when that hit, I mean, he sold like seven hundred thousand records the first week. Mm. I was back. That's a great album. <laughs> yeah. You talk about back. <laughs> what man? Publishing company called me and said, "What do you want?" Yes. Sir. I said, "A Lamborghini, <laughs> yellow." <laughs> they said, "Yes, sir," and I went and picked up my check, and I went and picked up my Lamborghini. What? And um, and I was back. That's good stuff. I was back. And then, and then we made Sex, Love, and Pain. And you know, over the years, you've had several albums. Um, some songs are hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Some yep. are great. Yep. When we. Some, you know, may not have been on the charts like you wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. What motivates you to keep going? I, I mean, I always think I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even when it don't work, I'm like, ah, we missed that one. The next shot going in. You know what I mean? Because I'm an athlete first. Right. You were playing college football, right? Or you? No, I was supposed to. They tricked okay. me. Yeah. But you went to um, music. Went to music. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, you know. And so, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a jump shooter, you know what I'm saying? I stand on the wing and wait for the wait for the point guard to dish and I shoot. And if I miss it, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll make it the next time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a I don't have a conscience when it comes to, you know, things, whether they worked or didn't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't take none of it with me. Okay. I always start like I'm starting over. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think that kind of keeps me going. I'm like, oh, this is the one. You know what I'm saying? And then when it don't work, I'm like, well, this the one. You know right. what I'm saying? Gotcha. <laughs> I never lose faith in believing that the next one is gonna be the one. Mm -hmm. Once you lose the once you lose the belief mm -hmm. that you're no longer making the ones, then you go do something else. Yeah. Cause this is not the place for that. Right. To not believe. Right. Because they're not gonna help you believe, not in this place. Right. You gotta bring it with yourself. Because they was like, ah, I like it, but, but this yeah. Usher record is way better, man. man you know, Usher record ain't doing no what I'm doing. <laughs> Usher ain't got what I got. I'm trying to tell you right now. Listen to this thing. Play it for your wife. Play it for your wife. <laughs> Love it. Well, the, we know that this industry can be real tough. Nasty. Especially nowadays. There yeah. are a lot of factors out there that make it so hard, but yet, it's not that bad because we have social media. I want you to talk about the importance of using social media and other resources to make it in this industry. There's probably somebody sitting in this room right now that wants to be an artist or a writer or a producer. What advice would you give? Well, I mean, just like you know, the guy who made my album, you know, from Instagram. Um, you are no longer there's no longer a middleman, although you could consider Instagram a middleman, but they're not charging you, right? So you're direct to consumer. You know, and I tell everybody all the time, out of the billions of people in this world, at least 100,000 people feel like you feel. And you can add $5 to that. And what do you get? Get a little bit of money. You know what I mean? And so that's how, that's how I approach it even now. You know, even though I have major, major deal. You know what's crazy? I own myself 100% right now. What? Period. What? I mean, I, I, I have for the last four years. So all my deals are licensing deals. You know what I mean? So I partner, we partner up and do work, mm -hmm. but nobody owns me. Good and stuff. so the beauty of your situation right now is that you own yourself 100%. Everything that you have is yours. All of your content, whatever it is, it's yours. And you have the ability to go direct to people. You know what I'm saying? Do you like my song? Mm -hmm. All right, I just need 99 cents to show me that you believe in what I'm doing over here. And you will have people from Australia, you will have people from China, you will have people from South Africa, you have people from all over the world buying your music as you were sitting around waiting on Warner Brothers or Def Jam or whoever else it was to recognize you, the people already do. You know what I mean? So I always tell people, don't wait to be in the music business. Just start doing music business yeah. right now. That's good. That's go up good. live. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever you selling, you selling. You make pies. Who can cook? <laughs> can you cook, I mean. man? If you don't get on your Facebook and make some pies, <laughs> I got ten pies for sale right now. They going fast. <laughs> I had thirty two of, them, but they done came and kicked the dough in and stole twenty. Ten more pies left for twenty five dollars. You better hurry up and act now. <laughs> 
I mean, that's true, though. Remember the guy a few years back who was singing those Patti LaBelle pies or whatever? That's it. Walmart could not keep those things Couldn't in the store off of some fan of her singing and tasting the pies on social media. It's that Amazing. easy. It's yeah. that. It's really that yeah. easy. Like, it and it's, it's. I mean, you gotta like think about it. it. There's a kid on YouTube made 55 million last year, opening toys and playing with them. My son watches him. He said, "Daddy, that's my cousin." <laughs> I said, "That's not your cousin. He's what? white. That's, 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 it's a white kid. Love it's not it. your cousin. You know, he doesn't know color yet. He doesn't know. <laughs> like, that's my cousin, Dad. You know what I mean? 55 million. What can you play with? I mean, you just get you a YouTube. Let's say that a different way. That's <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you Please do. It get different with adults. Adults, <laughs> it get wild with adults. I gotta be careful who I'm talking to. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> what can you do on your YouTube? Sometimes you it's the simplest things. You got people doing their makeup. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got people, there are all sorts of things. They're just on YouTube and it's content. And they're gathering views and they're gathering money. Mm -hmm. The business is in your hands at this point. Like I, it's, it's, it's two part. I'm so glad there wasn't social media in the beginning of my career. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> social media would have killed me in the beginning yeah, of my yeah, career. Yeah, oh, especially my as God. of late. Yeah, we know. Um, that's different though. Don't try. Don't try. Don't do too. Do. <laughs> um, but then, <laughs> but then, if social media was around, I would have been more. I would have been. I would have been. I would have been. You know, I would have had my entrepreneur, entrepreneur mind developed a lot earlier, because when I had hits like maybe I deserve and please don't go, yeah. I didn't know what to do after that. Mm. Nobody told me. Nobody said this is the time to build this and this is the time to build that. And I didn't know. I was like, I got a hot song. I'm gonna go on tour. I'm gonna get a bunch of girls and drink some alcohol <laughs> and live your life. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, you know, and now my mind is completely different. It's business. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's how do we connect that to that? And how yeah. do we like, like yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Great advice. Thank you for that. You will be able to ask Tank a couple of questions in a moment here. Uh Tank, person you would love to work with, that ultimate artist that you want to work with, who would it be? <laughs> I've worked with him before. Oh. Huh? Uh oh, Lil Shay. I've ah. worked with him before too. He's a good artist. She said Raheem Devon. Um, Great artist. Male or female, it doesn't matter. Work with Stevie. I'm telling right you now, I'm just not. Like, I'm not. Um, I don't know. There's nobody like that I'm seeking out. You know okay. what I mean? I just I just like good energy. You know okay. what I mean? And so whoever's willing to get in the room and do something cool and you know, like cause now art artists is like, you know too much. Like it's just it's not the same, you know what I'm saying? Like it was back in the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the caliber of artists in terms of talent mm -hmm. um is just different now. Oh, you know, course. back in the day, like if you were signed to sing, you had to be able to sing. Yes. Exactly. They didn't sign you to be an artist, an uh, R&B artist, because they thought you had a vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or your clothes look nice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. there was no other factor other than st stomp down, flat-footed, microphone, no lights, no nothing, yep. can sing this whole room happy. Yep. And we just, you know, we're missing those moments. So when it comes time to collaborate, people get a little scared of being yeah. exposed and scared yeah, of, you know, they don't, point. they're not in shape. They're like, man, Tank, you gonna take your shirt off when you're on stage <laughs> with me, man. And it, like, that's not my that's fault. That's a good point, though. You know that's a saying? good like, point. I work, on, I work on my breasts. Like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> that's an everyday thing for me. You know what I mean? To make mm -hmm. sure, you know, these things sit up. Um, but you bring up a good point because a lot of times people are just recognized because of the amount of followers they have, so because they look so things. sexy and pretty, yeah. Yeah. and there's really not a whole lot of talent behind it. So and, I agree and, with that. And so sometimes it's not even the artist. Sometimes the managers have to manage their artists to keep them away from things that will expose them in a way that it won't be beneficial mm -hmm. to their careers. Mm. 
Got you. I mean, it, it've been plenty of artists that were supposed to go on the road with me, all sorts of stuff. They're mm -hmm. like, they're like, man, I don't know what happened. Really? Okay. And I get it though. You can't, you know, the young guys don't want to take the older guy. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't be like this man, this old, this old nigga kicking my ass. <laughs> um, and then the older guys haven't stayed current. They mm -hmm. haven't stayed tapped in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? It's like my my my, my fan range is from 25 to 65. I'm going to say 85. All of that. Because I'll I was at your concert yeah, Saturday night. There were some 80-year-old women ladies. behind me. I kid you not, yeah. Tate. If I'm lying, I'm flying. They were like 80, like 78, 80, and they had come in from Wisconsin. I know you're from Milwaukee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were related to them, but they were back there like they were 30 years That's what old I'm talking enjoying about. you. That's Seriously. What I'm talking about. So sweet. I'm, I wish I had a picture of them I'm here to so keep you it, could believe me. Keep it all warm and moist. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It, for all ages. So all the ages. next question I have is, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get to you in just a second. What is the state of R&B? For years, you know, hip hop has dominated the charts. Even country music has taken the world by storm. But what do you think the, the state of R&B is right now? Well, I mean, it's not 100% it's not back to the mainstream yet, but um, it is being discovered more yeah. because, you know, because we have so many different um, different avenues to find music. Mm -hmm. And so now people aren't just re being relied, um, aren't just relying on Bing program, but they're programming themselves. And so yeah. when they get into a certain mood, um, they can go find it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can go check out, they can go s search out the vibe mm -hmm. that fits what they're going through at the moment. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's into the vibe now, so. Yeah. You know, R and B's kind of winning. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. Because you got rappers singing R and B, you got Drake singing, they all and then they do be a little sexy. rap. And they yeah, yep. they just want to. They did. They just want to. <laughs> they just start dipping into our pot and just mm -hmm. can't get out of it. Now they turn on their auto tune and. Da, 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 I'm coming home. <laughs> you coming home? All right. When the last time a rapper said I'm coming home? Right. Just right. hold on, I'm coming home. <laughs> True story, though. True story. Um, on my okay, nerves. so. On this, and then we're going to get to your questions in just a second, I promise. Um, so there has been some controversy recently, not about that, but about the state of R&B. And I was on your Instagram, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you were actually promoting Jacquees. Right. Jacquees is an R&B artist, for those who may not be familiar with him. A little younger demo. Um, he sings that song, Rather Be With You Than Know Your... You know that song? Okay. No. You don't. Okay. No, oh, this is what I'm getting at. I'm just lit. I mean, you're so down to earth. I've been interview interviewing you for years. You keep it 100, so I need you to keep it 100. I'm on your Instagram, and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. You're promoting this man's new album, King of R&B. That's the name of the album. And then he was on Wendy Williams the other day, and mm. Wendy Williams was asking him, so you profess to be the king of R&B. Ooh, what about... Keith Sweat, he's like, yeah, that's the OG. At first, you know, I wasn't with it, but yeah, I let him slide. That's my dude. And then he said, well, what about Tank? And he's like, who? He's like, I don't really know about him. I'm like, really? Of course you do. But I was just so taken aback when I saw that you're promoting this man's album on your Instagram. Yeah, he was, he was mad at me. <laughs> um, and I posted it after the interview. You know okay. what I mean? Um, no, no, I posted it in spite of the interview. I yeah, I, I mean, just thought that was so big I, of you to I do. I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because I told him, I was like, you're not the king of R&B. At all. And I said, I love you, but you're not the king of R&B. At all. And you shouldn't be allowed <laughs> to, disrespect, uh, to disrespect the genre of music Mm -hmm. That so many people have worked so hard, blood, sweat, and tears, and yes. years of fighting, and yes. like you can't just come in one album in, no hit songs, and start saying you the king or something. Mm -hmm. No, I mean this guy is in his early twenties, so nah, that right there should tell you. Not if you're gonna be around me, like right. like like it, and you know he's like you. I feel like you you hating on me, big brother. I'm not hating on you. There's a difference mm -hmm. between hate and tough love. Mm -hmm. I said I desire for you to have it all. I'll help you get it all, mm -hmm. but you're gonna have to earn it. Yes, like that's the school I come from. I ain't giving you nothing. Yeah. Ain't nobody give me nothing. 
worked for. Nobody. It. Ain't nobody say, Tank, you know what? I like what you're doing. I'm going to hook you up. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. in my whole career mm. had to fight for every inch of this. And I feel like I'm around because of it. Yeah. Because I put in real work. And you're going to have to put in some real work, youngster. Yeah. And I told him on the flip side of that, if you become the king of R&B, I'll be the first one to salute you. That's dope. I'll, I'll crown you. I'll, I'll pay for the ceremony. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Millard Jacquees <laughs> is now the king of R&B. Raise your glasses as we salute the man, the myth, <laughs> the legend. Yes. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But you got to put in some work around here. Got to. And we're, and this millennial crew is so into taking a name or being self-proclaimed. Yeah. And they have this thing, you oh, let, let, the, let the young people live. No. Earn the right to live. Put in work. Period. Period. Yes. And so we got to get back to holding, holding, holding fast to these traditions. Like, we don't have no traditions no more. Mm -hmm. Listen to country music. They got real traditions. You're not going to go over there in country music and give them country music charts and just think you're just going to do whatever you want to do, throwing 808s all over the place. Right. That's not a country song. Get out of here. Right. You see how they reacted to uh, Old Town I, Road. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't like it. Get out of here. Yep. We have traditions. We have rules. Yep. We have values. Can't force we it. don't have that. Mm -hmm. We just letting people live. Mm -hmm. No, not on my watch. Yes. And I got a nice watch. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> that's, I saw that. I got to watch you. <laughs> you guys got your questions ready for Tank? You just go ahead, stand up, and project for us, please. Hello. That's right. Okay. Cause, cause. No, no, no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, to answer your first part, in terms of um, um, you can sit down. Sit down. In terms of my spirituality, I'm always going to be always going to be connected to the Creator. Um, just in my journey and acquiring knowledge and asking questions, um, I've kind of strayed away from, um, I guess the uh, the business of church which I think is happening a lot more now than it ever has. Um, it's hard to find places that aren't doing church business, um, that aren't just um, going through the motions of church traditions and not truly connecting people to the source. Um, so for me, um, I've always stayed connected to the source. You know what I mean? I've always stayed in prayer. I've always stayed in belief. Um, and that keeps me going, period, point blank. Um, going from church to when we, um, <laughs> um, like I said, I always, I always just write from experience. You know what I mean? I always write, um, you know, because coming from the church, when you sang a song, like you, you had to sing it, you had to believe it, you had to know that you know that you know, because they sit on you with their arms folded. 
You know what I mean? You you need some more Jesus because that don't I don't feel it coming through anything that you have going on right now. The Holy Spirit hasn't quite ascended on you yet. Um, and so for me, it's always been about truth. So when we is um, when we is just a, f a few of my sexual experiences combined into one <laughs> musical soliloquy. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to say a better word. I really did. I really tried for like two hours to find a better word than the F word. But it's the only word that worked. It's the only one. I tried. I tried. I called people. I said, hey, man, I got this really dope song. But the hook, man, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm really all the way out there. I mean, it's my truth. But... It's far, and we, 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 I mean, we, any word you can think of that means hunching, we, uh, <laughs> you know, hunching, you, you, you hunch. <laughs> short strokes. Um, any word you can think of, we tried it, and it just didn't work, and that word worked, and so I said, This is the song, and we took it to the label, and uh, the head label of my lady, she's like, Who's gonna play this? <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> but this is the song. <laughs> and um and it worked. And it worked. So anything, you know, anything you hear musically by me is me. It's me. It's I've done it. Great questions. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. I don't. I don't. I don't look for balance in terms of that. I really just. OK, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I really just live my life the way I want to live it. I, I really don't ask permission. I really don't ask for validation. I'm really OK with the results of me doing it 100% my way. Nope, wasn't always like that. Wasn't always like that. I had, a, had to have a tough conversation with myself in 2015. And say, what do you, wh what do you wanna be remembered as? You know what I mean? And I wanna be remembered as me. You know what I mean? And that may win. Sometimes it may lose sometimes. But it's me. And it's honest. It's this lady back here and then you. Hey. I love you too. <laughs> today, I think it's champion today. Yeah, I think it's champion today. Sometimes when I'm in the turn up mood, you know what I'm saying? And I be wanting to do my little dances. I'm a little stiff, but I can move, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's champion today. I think champion is a dope message wrapped up into, you know, some current trap business. I believe I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. Like, and I'm not. Uh, you know, you, you always big on your babies. You know what I'm saying? You love all your babies, but this baby, this baby right here, <laughs> I'm your. <laughs> I was talking about music shit. Oh, you my baby. <laughs> you coming home. Don't trip. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like this is some of my best work. I do. I, I feel like it. And for, for the four of you in here that have it, thank you. For the rest of you, I need you to go pick up my best work, OK? See, effing with me is different because when you add extra letters to the word, you know what I'm saying, it's, it has a different context, you know what I'm saying, like, because effing with me is, could be like messing with me, you know what I'm saying, just the straight F word by itself, just those four letters, that's nasty, you know what I'm saying, 
it's, it's, it's no two ways around it. Like, you nasty. You know what I'm saying? Um, effing with me, I didn't have a problem with that at all. I actually, actually poked my chest out when I sang that. I said, oh, I got it. Like, I was, we were right, I was right with my guys. I said, I got it. He's like, what's that? I said, that's what you get every day when you don't get with me. <laughs> and everybody was like, oh! <laughs> it was one of those moments. And I, I, was, I was proud of that. And I had no idea that that song was as big as it was. I was singing it in concert one day. The music came on, and everybody started screaming and going crazy. And I looked at my manager and said, and I looked on YouTube, and it had like 20 million views mm -hmm. just on the audio. Yep. And now it's at like, shoot, almost at like 100 million, something, something crazy. Crazy. Yeah, y'all get on this. And then, it, and then the dancers start dancing to it. And then I did a little strip club run. I was hosting strip clubs, and all the dancers was dancing to it. And I was like, this, hello. <laughs> hello. And your second part question? Yeah, have a, we have um, a couple couple acts that we're developing. I have one artist, she's actually out of Chicago, um, signed to Motown. Her name is Feather. Really, really, really dope. See? Well, well I, we're not a major label, so the thing, the, the thing that, um, the thing that kills us is that they're only, they're only 24 hours in a day. You know what I mean? And so as we are in a space where we ha we have three artists that we're trying to figure out right now, you know what I mean? Signing three more is mentally and physically unrealistic because, you know, you, you want to devote, you know, some real time. You know what I mean? Nobody was supposed to be sitting there, you know, feeling like when is their time happening? Like we want to be able to, you know, devote some time. And we're always looking, you know what I'm saying? And always looking for writers and producers to help us with the artists that we have, but in terms of signing artists, we might be kind of full unless it's something that we can, and sometimes we'll just facilitate. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we'll say, okay, you're dope. You should go over here. We'll set the meeting up and put that together. You know, we'll maybe get a little percentage on it or something like that, but you know what I'm saying? If it's something we can facilitate, we do those kind of things too. I'm gonna take one more question from Sundance, if that's okay. Is, is that okay? Because we still have to take pictures with Tank, and we need to be out by one. Oh, I'm good. So we're gonna yeah, we're gonna do one more question. Chicago's tightest female DJ, Sundance. Take it away. Should take it away. <laughs> I okay, yeah, you know I know what it is. You know I know what it is. Um so it's funny you say that, right? Because um one of my really good friends is like one of the biggest house DJs in the world. Ooh. His name is MK. Yeah, look, he's Ibiza, he's oh. Vegas, he's, he's. Mm -mm. No, no. I, 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 this, <laughs> let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> Black people always competing. He, he ain't like my nephew. My nephew been doing it <laughs> in the streets for a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, he he's he's literally he's literally one of he he started I mean he started back in the in the nineties doing house music. Um he had some big hits back then. He went away to produce and write mm -hmm. and uh wrote like Pitbull, all that stuff. But then he was like, I wanna get back into my house vibe and so he's all over the world, like literally all over the world. You know, New Year's in London, like he's a you know, hundreds of thousands of mm -hmm. people show up to see him do his thing and we had this idea of doing this project together with me singing because house is very much, you know, it's 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 soulful. Like it's it's a vibe, you know what I'm saying? I want to hear me on it too. And I have this project idea that I think will be really dope that he and I were gonna do together. Um, um and because he's such an international um house DJ, you know, it the the idea of the project had an international title to it. But yeah, no, I love I, I love house like I love house music. Like I go 
my my wife is like, I cannot do this for another thirty minutes. I was like, uh, <laughs> and and I'm in there sweating and losing my oh, mind, that's and that real house. you know what I'm saying, all yes. over, like I'm all over the place. Yes, sir. I love it. Like I like I like I listen. I like my hip hop. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. I, I even like my R and B. You know what I'm saying. But I hear enough of that. You know yep. what I'm saying. Like when I really want to go out and have a good time. Yep. Like man, if I could find if I could find a good house party yep. somewhere, yep, where they where they where they and they, <laughs> I don't live here and it's cold right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so cold. I just want to let you know that. Like I'm from Milwaukee, right? And I used to be I used to be ready for this. I used to be built mm, for this. Mm -mm. I moved to LA 19 years ago, and I got unbuilt. <laughs> I got unready. Yeah, that wind hit different yeah, that, when that, you live what, in L.A. What that wind hit my <laughs> legs, I felt like I had a skirt on. Like, what is going on? I can't do this. Mm -mm. No. Well, Tank, we want to thank you so much Absolutely. for joining us today. <laughs>